Hey well, guys, JC Smith here. Today we're working on this truck. It's an 06 C4500. It's an 8.1 gas, um, Allison automatic, 19.5 tires, hydraulic brakes, of course. It's got a, I think it's a 12 foot flatbed, maybe. You know, power locks, power windows, power mirrors. Heat for the mirrors over there, PTO here, CD player, air condition, tilt wheel, cruise control, and an air seat. Um, <laughs> now I just said that because I'm just poking fun at our buddy Chuck. Um, I'm just giving him a hard time. Because he got a truck like this from me not long ago, back in, what, December? Something like that. And it's ironic that this truck has all the things that he wants his truck to have. He wants the the double headlights and the nice chrome bumper and you know everything else that I just pointed out and his truck doesn't have it and this old turd of a truck does it's just funny so anyways the problem to, with this truck is it's got gas line leaks um, they run a system on this thing of two tanks <clears throat> so they use a module and GM's been doing this for years where when the front tank gets so low it turns on a transfer pump from the rear and pumps fuel from the rear tank to the front tank so the problem with this is the gas lines from that tank to the filter leak. This uses a basic uh, fuel filter as a pressure regulator return. So I need to drop that tank and get the lines from there to the filter taken care of and look at the rear ones, see what they look like. And this is Ohio. We have rust. So the transmission lines are uh, cruddy and starting to seep. And I'm not going to let it go like that, so we're going to get the uh, transmission lines changed out too. So let me show you those. Okay, so I've just been working on these oh, these clip connections here. These are kind of a flare, not really a flare, but there's a ridge on the hose on the piping that goes in there, and then there's a clip around it that holds that into an O-ring seal. Well, I just barely touched this one. And you see what's happening here. So I'm gonna order these up new, but I gotta get these out, and then I'm gonna probably replace these two um, fittings also because they're pretty crusty. And they're not exactly easy to get out because they're all full of crud. So I have to chisel out all around in here. So and then the the clip the clip comes in. It's like a little loop that comes in. I'll show you. I got one out. So this is the clip, okay? So these little tips go in, and that's what holds it in place. Well, inside here is so rusty, I have to chisel all that out, find them little nubs, and get them to push out, and then pull the clip from the outside around here. And, uh, you know, it's taking a little bit of effort, so it's going to take me a little time. Let me get this out of here. All right, same thing on the radiator. You see how crusty this is. So I'm going to see if I can order new fittings too. Um, there's one up here, and then there's one, where's the other one? You know, right here where it's a little more difficult to get to. And they're both leaking, so let's see if we can get these ones out now. They're out. With the exception of the clips and, you know, digging all the rust out, getting them pulled out from their holders, there's only one fastener here, one holder up here they come out real easy I mean that was shoot I don't think I got a half an hour in getting them out that was pretty quick really but uh, now I need to get the quick connects out because that's pretty rough and I don't want to trust that you know it's pretty cruddy shove rust into that o-ring and it leaks so we're just gonna order new ones and it looks like these will just come out of that radiator. There's supposed to be an O-ring fitting back here, but I'm only going to pull one out at a time. That way, uh, if that's holding the cooler in place, it won't come loose. So I'll take one loose, replace it, and then take the other one loose. And same thing on the transmission. I'm going to replace those two because I think they're only at the dealer like $30 a piece. Online, they're like, I think the cheapest they found was 12 aftermarket. I'm not a big fan of aftermarket, but 
in this case these transmission lines are still available from the dealer but they're about a hundred bucks more for the pair you know total together not a hundred dollars more each and the fittings were quite a bit cheaper so I don't know let's see what we can do so this is the fuel lines that are leaking you can see it right here turn that key back on a second it's right there at the compression where it goes from steel to rubber. There you go. I don't want to get it on my phone. Alright, shut it off. It's going to drop on me now. <laughs> Anyways, so those go all the way back to the first tank. And I either have to replace the line from here all the way to the tank. On top of the sending unit, but the top of the sending unit is pretty cruddy too, so I may end up with one of those. So, before I go any farther, I'm gonna look and see if that sending unit is available, how much it costs. We're gonna go from there. Um, if it's available, it might be worth it to just go ahead and get a sending unit, run new lines from here back to the sending unit, and not have any troubles. Otherwise, I'm gonna have to be cautious to how I take it apart back here. It's rusty, but it's not like it's horrible and it's leaking. Uh, it's pretty typical, so let's see what we can find. There's a sending unit. I was able to get this one and this one off, but as soon as I touched this one, I saw it crack, so we're just going to get a new one. So I could get this out with the bed still on, but I don't want to take a chance of boogering up the new one to put it back in, so I just went ahead and dropped the tank, which really wasn't that difficult. Well, the first transmission hose came in, and it's correct. It's the right one. Um, the second one came in, and it is not correct. Um, I got OE numbers, you know, OE part numbers like this, and I found them, the one on eBay, so I ordered it through them. It was, you know, like one-third the cost of brand new. Well, it's not the right part number. I compared what they sent me to what that part number actually is just to make sure that it wasn't my mistake and it wasn't they shipped me the wrong part it, it wasn't the right one uh, there was no uh, there was no part number on it it said new in the listing but it was used it was obvious because you could you could smell transmission fluid down in here um, down inside the other one so we got to ship it back and get the other one so we're still delayed on this truck let's throw this in here and wait for the right one Finally got my parts here. These are the ones for the transmission. These two are for the radiator. Two transmission lines. Uh, the one that came from the dealer just came in yesterday. Today. Came in today. Ordered it yesterday. Yeah. And here's our new fuel pump. And I ordered a new lock ring for the tank too because the old one was pretty crusty. So, um, now the difference is our old fuel pump didn't use this so this one's gonna stay um, capped off I believe we'll double check that with our old pump so you can see this one was really bad and this one's just capped off so we'll just leave this plug on here we don't need that one so it looks like we're ready to go um, I'm gonna make my own fuel lines for this um, this was pressure I believe this was returned I'll double check that but we're gonna make our own lines I'll show you how we do that transmission lines in there there's a, a holder right there on the oil pan you gotta make sure you get that in there got my new fittings in here and got my lines in make sure that foil protection right by the exhaust here make sure it didn't move on me now I'm trying to keep the temperature down on on these transmission lines wouldn't even be a bad idea to put a metal shield here, you know, put one on the on the exhaust, so. Is that rough? <laughs> that looks better. No thread sealer, it's an no, O-ring seal. Quit moving them, I'm trying to get it. It's an O-ring seal right there. Yeah. 
do it one at a time so that cooler doesn't come loose in there because this is actually what sears seals the antifreeze too now you want to make sure you torque this to the proper spec extension in here for this side. This one. Come on now. Oh, this one's gonna lose some coolant here. I should get this ready first. Again, torque specs. Double check that top one here. Once you get these in, you know they're snapped in, these lock collars go on. Them lock collars are only supposed to go on once the clips are locked for sure. And it's got a retainer here and another one down on the motor and it really needs to be in there so they don't rub against each other. But that's the transmission lines. Now let's get the fuel pump and fuel tank put together. This O-ring, this little rubber gasket deal goes down in here and it's rubber against rubber so we're gonna put a little soap on it to make it a little bit easier to get in there I don't want to overload it but I definitely want it to slide easier I'll put some on this side too because it goes on that ring it's not really a nice smooth rubber seal either it's kind of coarse I didn't expect that mark here which is what this is right here and you've already cleaned this out yeah let me take my liner index and mark up get our hand again new locking collar put it on there Don't need to be right there push down on the metal not the lines. Now we'll start working our way around. You see that locker? Mm -hmm. Alright, I'm gonna go get some uh, punch here. Okay. So it locks on that plastic ring right there. And I don't know if you can tell, but there's a detent right here, right here. So we know we're in place, so we're ready to go back together. We're going to put the one line on here, which is a vent. It uh, goes down along the side, and i gotta, I got to remember which one that was. I think it comes over like, maybe it does this. What do you think of that? 
-hmm. Let's look at this one. Let's see which are <clears throat> which was our vent. It was off like this. This is the pressure line. As you can see, it comes from the pump. This is a vent. And this is a return line. And this is a vent. So it is the middle one like it looks. Just take this off. Put this right back in there. So now we're not going to be using this one. This will be our pressure. This will be our return. So we're going to go ahead and set this tank up in there. And then we'll start making our lines for it. Alright. So we're down in here. Got the connector on. Got to shove that little connect that little lock forward. And you've got several things going on here. One of which is this is a fuel fill. It's zip tied right here. These fuel lines or brake lines were zip tied to it. Making it almost impossible to pull that out. So you can pull it out some just a little. That's good right there. Right there is good. Alright, so we pulled all the all the fuel lines out. Now we're on all new fuel lines. So right now we have to do little by little because there's a lot. This is the fill coming from the rear. So uh, and this is plugged. There. So what happens is once this tank gets so low, um, turns on the rear pump from the rear tank and fills it in here, and once it reaches this point. If it doesn't shut off, it just keeps returning back to there, which the, this system is a constant problem on these trucks. We, there's lots of them out there problems, but uh, most of the time these are disconnected and this is just plugged off. Take this piece here and put it on here and be done with it. But this is only a 19 gallon tank. I mean, it's very, very little. You're not getting very far. 19 gallons with a 8.1 gas at 10 mile a gallon, 8 mile a gallon, something like that. So. Anyways, now we're ready to go back together. So I'm going to start by putting this fill on, hooking up this, uh, it's probably an evap line or vent or something. So we'll get that hooked up <clears throat> and then we'll start building our lines. We've got everything now to make our fuel lines. Um, this is actual plastic fuel line for fuel, not just air. That's what this is also for fuel specially bought you know just for fuel lines this is the fuel filter regulator this is the pressure line this is the return they're two different sizes the pressure line is the smaller of the two and the return line is larger um, what we're going to use is these quick disconnects this is a if I remember right a 5 16 by 5 16 this one is a five six uh, three eighths by three eighths on the return so we have one for this side and one for the center unit side and they correspond um, the way we put these together is they slide into here you press them in you can see how tight a fit that is and we put these on first these little crimp clamps permanent tension clamps all right and then when we put them on here they, the kit comes with a, a tool to basically just squeeze this like this. But I use this tool because as you squeeze it, this hammer push keeps that flat. And I'll show you how that works. Um, and we're also going to put wire loom over top of the fuel line to protect it. Okay, so I'm going to start with uh, getting just, I usually take the whole roll and just work with that. It's really not that difficult and I cut it to length after. I get it in place so let me uh, start get them together and I'll bring you back when I got some more details here all right can you see this mm -hmm. all right you see what happens here you start to squeeze that and that hammer makes it flat then you got a nice once they touch in here they can't get any tighter so that makes a nice permanent connection next thing is we're going to take some Super 88 by 3M. The Super 88 is thicker. I'm telling you wrong. Which one's thicker? Yeah, the Super 88 is the thicker of the 3M electrical tapes. 
So what we'll do is I take right here at the very end, make a couple wraps, kind of pull it tight. All right. Now we start our loom. And we take the loom, see where that tape's hanging? We put the split of the loom right where that tape's hanging. And take your tape and go over it. Just a few wraps. Make sure you pull it tight. And that's what you end up with. So that stays on there, it doesn't come loose. Okay? So now we'll start putting all this together and uh, we'll get underneath to the center unit. This goes pretty quick like this. Mm. So if you just peel this thing back, it opens up the slit so it's easy to get on. A lot of guys will put it on afterwards, like at, you know, after it's done. But uh, I need this to be in here because it goes between the tank and I can't get it on after. All right, when I put these together, you can see how tight that is. Usually what I'll do is just work the, the end in and once you get over that hump, you just keep wiggling it around and it will get in here. It's it's tight, it's very difficult, but this is the pressure line on this particular application, but you just gotta keep working it back and forth and you can see how difficult this can be. All right, just keep going. Be careful that uh, you're holding it so you don't crimp it. Because if you crimp it, you're gonna have to start over. Because once it's crimped, it'll stay crimped. And you can't bend it too much or you'll snap the plastic. We're almost there. So you can see, see that little short bit? I'll work that up, I'll get it up, and we'll bring it back when we're crimping. I got the fuel line in here, and what I did was brought it back down here and kind of looped it around because we're going to make a sweeping turn right to here, and I don't want it bound up or kinking. Let me just take this on here. And pull it back and forth, make sure you're on. You see what I mean? We got a sweeping turn here. Get some better light here. There we go. So we got a sweeping turn, and then it goes down to the bottom of the frame out this way, and then we'll terminate it out here now so we can finish this one and then use a the loom on the other one. So here's my line. I need to get up here to this filter. So we're going to cut this, but you don't cut it with side cuts. You want to cut it with like a razor blade to make sure I got enough. I leave a little extra because uh, you can always trim it if you need to, but it's really not exactly easy to uh, add on to it. And just take these and you can see how this works. And it keeps it nice and round and makes it easier to get the next piece on. And the same thing with the loom. I'll stop the loom a little bit long. I don't mind wasting some loom. And then we'll feed it through. It needs to go here. The other thing is, if it's going to go in somewhere pretty crappy, probably want to be sure to plug the end up so you don't get any crap in it. And I'll finish feeding this through. i got to get the loom on or it passes through that cross member. So let me get that on and finish this up. I always make it just a little bit longer than we need. Um, that way we got some room in case, you know, you drop the tank down, you got enough line to move back and forth if you need to. And uh, this is the return line, so now we're gonna put that fitting on and repeat the process, and then we'll do the other one. There's the pressure line. It's doing the same thing. Bring it in here, make a loop. This plastic line doesn't make good tight turns, so 
everything you need to do is in a loop. Now, if you got to make one that's a real tight turn, take a heat, a heat gun. You can heat it up and gently massage it. Don't not not to where it collapses, but uh, you can gently massage it to be what you need. And you listen here. These are so easy to get on. You know, it works out real well. Um, I'll show you what it looks like here, and then we're going to uh, put the stuff, put the line in holders, zip tie it together so it can't move, because things that can't move don't rub, when they start to move they can rub on each other, so um, that's next, so let's get into that, I'll show you the everything all buttoned up right here. This is it, so you can see how my lines kind of come in here, get the light better for you, so they curve around here, nice sweeping. Like I said, if you needed to make a tighter turn, you can take a heat gun before you put the loom on. Heat that line up just ever so slightly. It makes it a little more pliable, and you can form it the way you want. When it cools, you just hold it till it cools, and it'll be right in that way you want it. Here's where we're at now. Now we got to take these lines, get them together, get them in the holder, and get everything zip tied together. Now you're working on something, you get your arm caught on these zip ties that are cut cut on an angle, they got all this left here. I'm going to show you what I do to try and avoid that. Take your regular pair of pliers, grab as close to that as you can get, up to where it cinches on. Of course I'm trying to do this one handed so it works so well take that and you just twist it nice and flush less likely to scrape yourself on it and have issues alright my lines are all buttoned up see how nicely they fit everything works like it should roll in place down through here I got my line zip tied in place so it should be good to go so now I need to get some fuel for the tank now we're topping off the transmission fluid. It was uh, leaking enough that I'm pretty sure we're at least a couple quarts low. So I'm going to go ahead and put them in before we start it. Um, and then we'll start it up, check for leaks and all that kind of stuff. Okay. Alright guys, we are all buttoned up. Um, we've topped off the coolant topped off the transmission fluid we've put gas in it we've started up we've let it run for about oh just about 40 minutes there's absolutely no leaks anywhere everything's dry all the repairs are good to go uh, that plastic fuel line kit that we used you can get lots of places um, it's not horribly expensive everything I bought was $164 so it's not horrible but keep in mind that I bought um, a new roll of 33 plus, a new roll of uh, Super 88, a full roll of 3 8 fuel line, a full, a full roll of 5 16 and I really only needed probably uh, maybe 6 feet of each one. So uh, my cost was quite a bit more, you know, because uh, that's the way I decided to buy it. Actuality, you probably could have done this job for about $60 in parts if you bought them all individual and bought the line by the foot so about 60 bucks so if you got a truck or whatever that's got rotted out rusty fuel lines um, look into it you might be able to repair them yourself in plastic and save yourself some time um, but uh, the next step for this truck is we're going to take off this running board here get it cleaned up and repaint it we're going to take the wheels off clean them up repaint them uh, front and rear both sides we're going to clean the frame up repaint it I haven't decided on this on this bed yet. It's got some issues. I don't know if you can see that right in there, but uh, it's got uh, it's got some rust issues here and there. It's still a good usable bed, so I'm not sure if I want to take it off. This is not a high dollar truck, you know. So if I take it off, then it needs an upfit to work. And uh, if I leave it here, at least it's it's a a decent bed that can be used. So, anyways. Um, if you guys want to see that, let me know in the comments. If you, like I said, if you want to see us do all the paint work and 
clean it all up in the next video we can do that just leave it in the comments that's going to be it for this one if you like what we're doing give us that thumbs up if you haven't already hit that subscribe button leave your comments down below guys and we'll catch you on the next one